crimson. Makes a nice dark, with the opposite on the colour wheel. Just want to establish some of the darks first thing. We'll put that in. Just going to feel my way around what we got here. What do we have today? Some chunking like so. Like so. Just feeling my way around at the moment. Nothing set in concrete here. Getting somewhere. Right, they can go there. They can go there. Yep. Just keep placing a few more of those darks in now that I've established pretty much where I want them. Bit of burnt sienna maybe with that alizarin crimson. Dark actually, let's throw some blue in there, which is fair. So now I've used a little bit of ultramarine blue also just to vary it up a bit. Now I've got yellow ochre, viridian green, and burnt sienna. I'm still making up all the darks, but just varying them a little. This will be more where the weed's hidden, just through here. Like so Fresh yellow ochre in here. That looks good, yeah, that's about right. Shoot up there. Just very much still feeling what's going on here. We don't want to overstate anything just yet. I'm just going for the big impression. We'll just peel that tape back a little. What are we gonna do? Just go a little bit higher here. Like so. In this corner, I'll go a little bit higher again, I don't like that. Somewhere along those lines. Now, if you hear a bit of background noise, that's because I'm in my other studio and it's a little bit noisy. You can hear a little bit of car noise, but you can also hear the chooks because it's right near the chook house. So, just bear with me with all that. Let's just establish where we're going to put the horizon. Might go for some ultramarine blue, white. Ultramarine blue is quite a nice colour for a full Sunday day, so I'll go with that for starters. I want it to be pretty strong today because I will go darker. I want it to be fairly strong today because it's, a, it's going to be a full sunny day on painting. So I want colours to really pop with a bit of strength but I'm still going to use simple colours. Now what I've just done is I put burnt sienna and a bit of magenta I'm just trying to knock the chromatic saturation down a little so it's still a strong sunny day but not quite full strength full accent. Now I've got that tape as you've seen in other videos measured exactly exactly spot on level so I don't have to worry about getting my levels right later on She's right from the word go. Let me just go a little bit darker. Let's try some ultramarine blue and magenta. Really get some good dark. A little bit close, almost like there's weed. You get a bit of seaweed on the bottom, a few rocks and seaweed and whatever. Just a little bit of that thrown in. So, I'll work that out later, just want to get those colours in. Let's get rid of that tape, eh? There we go. Alright, well that's about good. Now let's establish the biggest difference up here in the sky, eh? There's a lot to do, so let's get everything covered. A lot more white. I'll use those colours I was using a second ago, but a lot more white and a bit more magenta. I want to put a bit of a coastal haze right at the horizon where you get a lot of that breaking surf and whatever, you get a lot of salt air. 
bit of burnt sienna to knock it back in chromatic saturation, not quite as bright in colour. So she's a bit greyed off. There's that chook, I can hear that chook now. She's a little bit greyed off, but what that does, it's really like I was saying, giving it that salt haze now. Just going to put it in. Not quite touch that line yet. I'll touch that line later on when I feel it's like it's time to do so. Just like this. Bring her in. What we're going to do over here is going to be a bit of surf flying around over here, so we'll just put a bit in like that. Okay. Stick a little bit more of that in. Now this one today is on canvas, quite a large canvas. And the other day I was painting on board. Just want to mix it up a bit and show the difference. Board's a little bit harsher, so I find maybe I need to use a brush as well as a knife to get the softest softs. But uh, painting on canvas just has a bit more give when you're going to use a palette knife like so. Painting on the canvas just has that little extra give and allows you to soften that a little bit more. All right, we'll go for some clean blue. Change takes a little bit. Let's put that one over there. Plenty of white. Bit of yellow ochre with this one now. So we've got yellow ochre, titanium white, and a bit of ultramarine blue. This is going to be just the colour of the sky just above that coastal salt air haze. Let's see what we've got here, eh? Pretty good. We'll just bang that in. And go in here like so. together a little with a knife. Oh, that's good. Now I'll just pull a bit more of that blue across and a little bit less of the yellow ochre. So there's a little bit more of the ultramarine blue. A nice sunny colour. A bit more white. Maybe a twang of the yellow ochre just to keep on going with that theme. Put that on. Apply the paint. Get that paint flowing. Look at that. Get that paint on as quickly as possible. Just like you're painting on plain air. Before the light changes. Alright, let's go up another layer. More ultramarine blue, less of all the ochres and whatever else, trying to get a stronger chromatic saturation as you're looking more up into the sky. It's a cleaner blue, particularly on a nice sunny day like the one we're trying to knock up here. A bit more white. Alright, oh, that's not bad. Put that on. Maybe a twang more white wouldn't hurt anyone. That's it. That paint going. There she goes. All right, a bit more white, a bit more blue. Maybe a tad of red now, like I'm going to use magenta as my red. Just as the sky goes further and further up, it tends to go more towards the ultramarine blue, a little bit more, even a little bit more red maybe, and I'm using magenta for that. Have a look what I've got, eh? A bit more blue. Apply that paint. Let's get the paint on as quick as I can. And I'll start getting a few bit more variety in marks as I go. But for now, I just want to get that paint on. A little bit neat around the edges. 
that. Yeah, like that. There we go. Bit of a workout getting this sky on. I'll blend all that in a minute. I'll just stand back and have a quick look, see what I reckon. Alright, so we've got sky in, basic shapes of the rocks with the darks. What I want to do now is paint some of those middle tone darks rather than the darkest darks. So I'll get some burnt sienna, mix it with some of those dark blues from before. Really, really hot. A bit more ultramarine blue to kill it off, make it more of a neutral grey colour. So you've got burnt sienna. It's fairly neutral. Burn sienna and the ultramarine blue really darkens things off. But there will be some areas where I've got a little bit more blue where the sky is reflecting in the wet rock. Because the rocks have just been hit by the surf. They're tending to give off that reflected light type of thing. So I'll stick some of that in. As well as going for the darks. Same time. And these rocks are still fairly jagged, even though they're weather beaten and had a lot, obviously had a lot of water over the years smacking against them. It's amazing how much they've held up to the elements and kept their jaggedness without getting too rounded. Right. Now this side over here is reflecting a lot of blue. On the other side, there's going to be surf down in here, broken up white water surf. There's a lot of the reflected light of that surf in here. So I'm just going to knock it in now. Get that real reflected light. There's a lot of subtle accidental colours coming in there, which is really nice. Keep going with this thing. Blend, blend, blend. A little bit of blue here from the sky. It's going to be a combination of both, you see. I think there's a bit of blue bouncing in. See what I got, eh? Going pretty good. Let's get some yellow ochres, burnt siennas. Make up a little bit more of an ochre colour. Some of the rocks here. They're going to be dry. They're not really hit the, the water hasn't really hit them and broken on them. So I'm going to paint them a lighter colour, more to burn siennas. Like that. Yeah. That's good. Burn sienna, yellow ochre, through here a bit of weed. A bit more weed there. There's so much variety in all these colours, it's got me dancing around a little, hasn't it? A bit of darkness in there. A bit more of the weed colour, which could be burn sienna, yellow ochre. Seems to be pretty good. Weed on there. 
yellow oak car. Bit of weed around the edges there. All right, let's just have a look, eh? All right, that's sort of coming along. Let's just quickly get, before we go too much further, let's just blend a little bit of this sky so it's not just all the different tonal values that are in there are not just staring at each other. We want them to be slightly blended. So I'm just going to use little marks to pull it together. Like so. Blend, blend, blend. Random marks any which way. Get them all on. Here we go. Looks like that. That's coming along nicely. Beautiful blue sunny day down the coast. Standing right on the edge of the rocks and just watching the water thrashing in. Nothing better. So much energy out there in that surf, so much potential energy. It's just great to see it all. So that's blending nicely. It's a good random variety of marks. All right, well, all's coming well along. Looking pretty, pretty correct. All right, so what we're gonna do now is go for obviously this biggest difference. Let's put some of the wave in, the major statement, the keynote. On the roof. Viridian green, yellow ochre today. I reckon I'll go for a nice turquoisey type of wave. Can you hear that bird on the roof? I'm not sure if you can or not. Bit of burnt sienna thrown in. Bit of burnt sienna with that. Just trying to find the exact colour I want. So I've got the yellow ochre and Viridian green, but I've just thrown a bit of burnt sienna just to make it ever so slightly more olive green, I guess you could say. Actually, let's just try a tiny bit of blue in that. Once I settle on the right one, I'll be right. Yeah, there's a little bit more blue in that. It's not a bad colour. Yellow ochre and blue seems to be working good. Now, like any of these waves, there's going to be a variety of colours in them, obviously, but for now, I'm just going with this. It's ever so slightly darker there. A little bit more of the yellow ochre dominance now. There's just a little bit, a little bit of sand stirred up in the bottom. Around here, just a little bit, a bit more white, a bit of foam as well. Lighten that value off. I might just go a little bit higher there too. Just the way feathering a little bit there. Come on, we'll just throw a bit of this sky blue in. Just here. Bury things up a bit there. So I've got those kind of green turquoisey colours I was using there, but I'm throwing a bit more of the sky blue because I guess what's going on there is the sky's reflecting, the beautiful blue sky is reflecting. Here we go, that there, that there, and creating slightly more balloons. A bit more burnt sienna. It's all very varied, like I was saying, because it's all churned up water, so you've got to vary all the, vary all the colours. So we've got a bit of burnt sienna now and a bit more yellow ochre for a bit more earthy disturbance getting thrown around in here. All right. Nice. 
I'll end up putting a little bit of foam on it, man. I'll just stand back. White, fruity and green. What are we doing here? Let's go here. All right. A lot more white with those blues. A bit more of the ultramarine blue. Mix that in. Ultramarine blue and white. There's a little bit of a shadow cast on this cliff over here, like so. And it's making anything that's foam oriented kind of a bluish colour. Just going to get some white, but I'm going to make it slightly toned down white. Save my pure white for the accents. So I want to knock up a bit of foam. So I'm like a bit of burnt sienna, a bit of blue with the white, just to knock it back a few, few bits. So it hasn't got the full chromatic saturation, well not the chromatic, but the full tonal range of white. It's slightly more towards black. Just slightly toned down, not too much. Blend it together, just trying to get that foam that's in the wave blending nicely. Broken up bits of foam. And like I'm saying, I'll get the accents soon. I also just want to underlie, underlay the bits of foam that have already broken and not the, not the main point that I want to put, my, put the attention to. It's a keyed down version, I guess you could say. Right. White. Then Sienna. What do we got here? Let's just start filling some of this up. A bit more burnt Sienna. Because I've already got a bit of green on the knife, I'm working with that. A combination of that and the burnt Sienna. the sky blue in here so if I put fairly close to pure white and then mix it in like that it'll be a toned down version. It'll be breaking right up there eh? It's just little marks to soften it off. Feathering of the wave on the top. How high do I want that wave to be? You know, let me see. I think I want her up here. She's just feathering off a bit. Like so. Nice. Want that clean. Gonna use little marks like I'm doing so, like this, just to pull that foam, slowly blend that foam into the sky, if you know what I'm saying. So it looks like it's kind of thinning off as it's breaking up, up into the sky. There's a horizon there. Ah, I nearly cut myself, you gotta watch out with these knives. They, uh, they can get sharp over the ages by constantly rubbing and moving around. You're not looking in your wipe like that and miss a piece of paper and hit your finger, I tell you. You may have seen me do it before. All right, so it's coming along. Get a bit more softening. I'll bring that horizon together in a minute.
Obviously, there won't be a white line on the horizon, so I'll eliminate that right now. With the knife upside down. When it's upside down like so, pull away from the subject. There we go. Now bring it up together, blend it a little bit more. Just like to use the little marks for blending, it does a couple of things. Pulls all those colours together nicely. It also gives a lot of variety, like you get those little marks, gives the illusion. The illusion of a lot more detail. Wipe that clean. A lot more going on with all those marks. A lot more variety too. Just pull that up there, the breaking surf, pull that one up there, look at that. Vary your marks all different directions. If anything, they can get slightly longer as they're getting closer to the top. It's almost like creating that linear perspective or whatever you want to call it. The distance, everything's sort of little and then it gets, as it gets closer they can broaden up, become bigger marks like so. And it seems to work well for creating the illusion of distance. Just neaten that off. Keep moving around, keep altering things slightly as you feel like you need to. Darken that a little bit. What else do we need to do, eh? That comes in there. Just a bit more variety and chunkiness in the rocks here. from the sky, like earlier. Pull that through, all clean. All clean. Your white rusher in. Some off white there just to create a reflection of the wave itself. Reflection in the water itself. mucking around with this stuff until I get the right combination that I feel happy with. Wave feathering off at the top a little. Stick some nice highlights where the sun's really reflecting on it in the wet patches. Just random here and there. Put some in, take some away later if you put too many. Some big chunks of yellow ochre really accent the weed itself. Pull the weed in, lovely chunks, beautiful colours. Well, the weed's really a really big accent against all the cool colours. You've got that warm value, I guess. Set it off nicely. going to carefully soften and subtle up some of these areas in here. 
That's one of the keynote areas in here where you want it to be soft and beautiful because you've got the contrast of the hard rocks, you've got the thrashing, moving white surf, and then you've got that kind of silence of the wave as it lifts up and it's just about to break. There's something really soft and translucent about it. So we just pull that up and get that really subtle. getting some beautiful random random marks going on here to try and give the feeling of movement. Whoops, paint flying everywhere in here, that's a good sign. Yeah. You pull the pull the knife through here and there and you get that real feeling of movement. All right, well that's all coming along quite nice, quite happy with what's going on. So I'm just going to get some good accents now. I'll get some pure whites, saving the pure whites. Just stick a few fine marks here and there. It's a little bit of water spilling over. Just knowing how much to put on is the secret. bit here and there. So what we've got is the grape. What I've done, like I was saying, is I've really moved the knife. Once I, already, once I had the paint in there, get the palette knife and really thrash it around. That gives that feeling of movement. I've tried to do that everywhere. And like with the foam, like I was saying, I keyed it down so it wasn't pure white. And now I'm getting the pure white and just popping it in there so I can really accent against everything else because the rest of the painting doesn't have that intensity about it. Really pull your eye in then. So I feel like I'm getting the movement I feel like I'm getting the reflected light coming back up in here off the sky and off the white foam. The energy of the wave itself, transparency. It's all coming together. I'll just stand back and have another look. Just adding some highlights as the foam's getting burst into the air, spewing up a bit of the pure white. Not too much, gotta be careful. Hang on, gotta have a clean knife for this job too. Just spew that up. Peel it up and soften it so it's, it's a very soft thing as it's blowing out like that. Alright, well, pretty happy with what's going on now. I reckon I should probably just leave it alone. Like I was saying, it's got that spontaneity of that thrash the paint on. When you're down there on the coast and you're actually looking at the waves coming in, there's so much energy. You can feel the energy and you can feel the movement. It's not stagnant like a photo. And so I'm trying to create that same sort of vibrant movement in the painting. And I feel like with this technique of thrashing the paint around, I'm pretty much only using this one knife. I pulled out the slightly smaller knife at one stage to try and do something. It wasn't actually helping, so I just went back to the big guns. Anyway, so I feel like I've got that movement and energy like I was there on the day. Now, as far as how I worked it, as you saw, I put the darks in first, and I've left the darkest darks right here next to the whitest whites, because that's the accent there, and I want to pull the eyes. Everything's leading into that spot, so I really wanted to save that for there. Everything else here, Slightly, like I was saying, I've gotten more movement by moving the knife around. 
but also it's taking it slightly out of focus, which also draws attention away from that, more towards the in-focus focal point here, so I've got sharper, cleaner lines. So it's a combination between hard and soft as usual, lost and found. Colour combinations, very simple colour palette. Just got Viridian Green, Magenta, Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna, Alizarin Crimson, Yellow Ochre, Titanium White, and that's it. All right, just before we get the camera off and come in and have a closer look, I'll just talk about this thing on my face here. Got a little bit of a wound just there. And everyone thinks that when you come to Australia, the main danger is venomous snakes and venomous spiders. But I've got to tell you, the main danger is the intensity of that sunlight. Being a plain air painter, done a lot of outdoor work, well now the sun's starting to attack me a little and I've got to get a few bits cut off myself. So that's the thing you've really got to be careful with. If you keep, keep away from the snakes, give them their distance, whatever, it all seems to be okay. They're all happy to just live their own life. But as far as that intensity of sunlight, you've really got to, hence the Akuba, you've really got to be careful with all that stuff. Anyway, in saying all that, happy with the painting. Let's get the camera off, come right in, have a quick buzz around and check out the different way I've applied the paint, the different colours and the technique. Alright, thank you.